Hello and welcome. Twisted Metal Head On is the seventh title in the Twisted Metal series. Releasing a full 10 years after the original, it is largely considered the true sequel to Twisted Metal 2. Since the actual Twisted Metal 3, developed by 99 Studios, was so universally panned by critics and fans of the time. Thankfully, Twisted Metal 3 and the incredible team that developed it have since received their due love for the hard work they put into the games they made. But that's not what this video is about. Twisted Metal Head On was originally released on the PlayStation Portable back in 2005, but was later ported to the PlayStation 2 a few years later, in 2008, a full two years into the life cycle of the PS3, if you can believe it. The PS2 port was titled the Extra Twisted Edition and included a number of exciting bonuses such as a new level Transylvania in tournament mode, along with a playable version of the cancelled sequel to Twisted Metal Black, known as Harbor City. There was also a documentary called The Dark Past, in which series creators David Jaffe and Scott Campbell told their stories of working on the Twisted Metal games. And it may have simply been me on a phone call going, are you out of your f mind? The PS2 port is what I consider to be the definitive version of the game, as it includes the most content and most accessible way to play compared to the PSP version. But before we get started, please be sure to like this video and utterly demolish that subscribe button if you enjoy this content and want to see more like it. In many ways, it seems that the team at Incog Inc. who developed Head On were trying to take ideas and themes from 989 Studios Twisted Metal 3 and do them right, so to speak. Even from the moment you fire up the game, you are greeted by an opening cinematic that is very reminiscent of the one seen in Twisted Metal 3, with action-packed scenes of the tournament playing out all across the world while Calypso sits back and watches it all unfold. Both are excellent at communicating the all-out carnage of Twisted Metal, but there is just no way you can touch the magic of Twisted Metal 3's opening movie. Many of the characters return from Twisted Metal 2 as well, such as Outlaw, Mr. Slam, Roadkill, Twister, Grasshopper, Axel, and, of course, Sweet Tooth. Among many other familiar faces and vehicles, the character stories are more or less continuations of what they were in Twisted Metal 2. The game almost assumes that every character won their respective tournaments in Twisted Metal 2, which would go well beyond the scope of human understanding to try to make any sense of, so I won't even try. Starting the game proper, I decided to let the universe decide for me what vehicle I shall embark on this journey with. Like a leap of faith, I slapped the d-pad repeatedly, and after an arbitrary amount of time, I pressed X to select my destiny. I did so without looking, because the cosmos would probably like to do their business without the prying eyes of mere mortals. It wasn't until I loaded into the level that I discovered what character I was condemned to use. ATV. Literally Boomhauer on an ATV a meme on four wheels, and the weakest character in the entire series. The only reason to use ATV is when you want to give your significant other a subtle hint that you like it rough, but you're too embarrassed to show them your search history. Naturally, I was left with only one option, defy the universe and pick a different vehicle. I ended up with Axel, the iconic man trapped between two wheels. He's as shirtless as always, and his jeans leave nothing to the imagination. His special weapon this time around remains unchanged from his appearances in other Twisted Metal games. His axle power creates a blast around his machine that throws opponents away while doing a moderate amount of damage. He's still a slow lumbering fella, and has a decent amount of armor. The only major facet of his vehicle that's missing from previous games is his enormous ramming potential, where in Twisted Metal 2 he was a raging ball of destruction, throwing himself against helpless opponents as they explode on contact. Here he is a timid shell of his former self asking politely for his enemies to give up as he brushes up against them. This is made very obvious during the Big Blue Stadium minigame, where I had to destroy a bunch of Yellow Jacket taxicabs, but was somehow felled by them by their superior ramming capability. Other than the diminished ramming of Axel, he still holds firm as the top contender in the tournament, dispatching the competition with relative ease. The first level does bring us to Big Blue Stadium, which as you might imagine is a big stadium that utilizes several shades of blue. It's fairly simple in layout, essentially just a box with extra steps. There's an indoor area that acts as a reprieve and contains a full health and the minigame that Axel is terrible at. In the main area of the map, you can find weapons scattered around the field along with a stage that has the new metal band level playing their song Disaster Proof. It's rather small compared to some of the other arenas, but it's solid and offers a decent battleground to kick the game off. I chased Thumper into the dugout after my freeze missile failed to connect and just unloaded whatever weapons I had equipped. Some hit, some didn't. Such is Twisted Metal. This is a good example of how easy the game tends to be for players. I chose the hardest difficulty to provide some sort of challenge here, but even then it doesn't take much to end an opponent. The overall health values of enemies is far less than other games seem to be. After just a few Ricos and a healthy blast of Axel Power, Thumper was turned into burning wreckage. This revealed one other aspect of this game the upgrades. Taking out an opponent will spawn a green triangle above their flaming remains. Picking it up will grant the player a series of bonuses, their jump height, machine gun, special weapon, ram damage, turbo and energy, and more. However, when you die, you lose all your upgrades and must reclaim them. 
with Thumper down that left just Grasshopper and Mr. Grimm. Grasshopper was utterly helpless as I sped towards her and let loose Axel Power, leaving Grimm on his own to fend for himself. Poor guy. He froze me, but it only delayed his inevitable doom. Once unfrozen, I found a ricochet pickup and fired it. The ricochet came flying back, bouncing off every surface it could until it found its target. This concluded the first level. Moving on to Los Angeles, a staple of the series. This is the first level we've encountered so far that is a direct reference to a map that appeared in Twisted Metal 2. It's an updated and highly detailed version of Quake's Old Rumble that maintains the iconic looping road that surrounds the map. It adds in a number of areas and features such as a bunch of construction equipment, movie studios, and a teleporter that will take you up to the Hollywood sign. There's much more complexity with the level this time around, but it isn't so insanely well crafted that it will supplant Quake's Old Rumble as the best LA map of Twisted Metal in the minds of many fans. But it's still a great time for what it is, with lots of fun areas to explore. And this is where the limitations of the PSP start to seep in though. Given that head-on was originally developed for the handheld, there are some elements of the game that had to be reined in a bit. Where Twisted Metal Black had up to 8 opponents blazing around each map, head-on maxes out at 5 for the tournament mode, even on PS2. This is another layer of difficulty that the game doesn't have. Not only are enemies much more easily dealt with, but there are just fewer of them overall, leading to situations like I had on this map where I effortlessly cut through the competition in mere minutes after obtaining a decent stock of weapons. But even then, taking out enemies is extremely satisfying, and some of the best in the series in terms of visceral enjoyment of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. But once that initial feeling of badassery fades, there isn't as much meat on the car combat bone as other games in the series. Twisted Metal 2 and Black were so overwhelming in their difficulty that players are left with no choice but to constantly update their mental calculations to improve against and overcome the competition. That overcoming period is much shorter on head-on, which makes it far more easy to recommend the new players than almost any other to metal game, but doesn't offer the same rewarding gameplay experience over many playthroughs as perhaps Twisted Metal 2, 4, or Black Will, but that's just my opinion. And besides, this game feels so good to play regardless of the perceived difficulty. The controls are smooth and easy to use, the physics are nearly perfected, the weapons are all useful and interesting, and oh, would you look at that, we're already on Paris. Paris is another example of a level ripped directly from Twisted Metal 2, but given an update. Half of the map is almost identical to its appearance in Twisted Metal 2, complete with the Eiffel Tower being destructible and creating bridges between the different buildings when blown up, but behind the Eiffel Tower is an area that was completely non-existent in TM2, but is a welcome addition here. There is plenty of space to run around and build your arsenal before giving your opponents the old Axel power. This map, along with many others, have a fantastic feeling of proper scale. Twisted Metal has never been a series known for having a strong relationship with the concept of levels and vehicles being the right size compared to one another, but the buildings and landmarks here appear believable. I actually have to take a bit more time on this level to clear out the bad guys, but once I got going with the upgraded machine guns, it didn't take much time at all. When I got down to just one enemy, I decided it was only right that I detonate the Eiffel Tower, because no Twisted Metal is complete without it. Taking a lap over the wrought iron corpse of Paris's greatest icon, I turned my sights towards Twister, and with just a few mega gun rounds, she was tumbling away as an unsalvageable wreck. This brings us to our first boss battle, against raving lunatic and professional hillbilly king, Cousin Eddie, and his army of slack-jawed yokels. The boss battle occurs in several waves, on the nighttime version of LA, from the second level. The first wave requires almost no effort at all, just a handful of ATVs that are exactly as weak as you would assume a do on an ATV would be. Just absolute paper armor against a fire hose kind of situation. With those poor fellas swiftly dealt with, it brings Cousin Eddie out of his turtle shell and into the battle. Before I could start to do direct damage to the RV, I had to first take out each hillbilly occupying the various windows and turrets of the RV, as if their life force was somehow powering some unseen force field. This was simple enough, my Axel power. In tandem with the weapons I didn't have to use against the ATVs, made for quick work of the hillbillies, as I just sat above them on a ruined freeway section. It was barely even a full minute from the end of his animation to start his phase of the battle, to when he was fully destroyed. Definitely not a worthy successor to the minion boss battle from Twisted Metal Black. But that does take us to the next level. Roman Ruins. Roman Ruins is a map that I don't have many strong feelings for, it's sort of just there. No real defining color palette or design features, just a decent layout with nothing that stands out. There's only four opponents here, so at least it goes quick. It's basically just a center arena area flanked on either side by small square sections. It took barely two minutes to finish off the competition, so with Thumper taken out I did my celebratory Axel Power dance that provided a view I thought I'd have to pay extra to see, and onto the next level I went. These snowy vacant streets offer the biggest map yet, with easily the most areas to explore and get lost within. With only 5 opponents to fight, this map feels even more empty. The vast distances you must cover to find your next opponent was felt more here than on any other map. But at least the scenery is nice. 
the quiet overcast giving way to a peaceful snowfall is a welcome backdrop to the all-out chaos of Twisted Metal. Within the first 20 seconds, I had my first enemy down, and in just over 2 minutes I destroyed Twister, Sweet Tooth, Grim, and Outlaw. It really can't be stressed enough how easy this game is to get through, but it remains fun nonetheless. It is beyond satisfying to launch a homing missile while driving full speed, only to see your opponent off in the distance succumb to explosion poisoning, their car reduced to a tumbling mass of useless metal. It's really a shame that the PS2 port wouldn't allow for more enemies per level. but. With everyone blasted off into oblivion, we mosey on over to Monaco. Monaco was definitely one of the more visually appealing maps to appear thus far, with striking colors and interesting set pieces. It makes for a fantastic battleground, from the winding racetrack cutting a path through the small nation state to the dock full of yachts, there is always something neat to look at while you decimate the field of opponents. Which is good, because these guys barely put up any resistance, with Crimson Fury even more content with just throwing himself into the sea than to face the wrath of Axel and his power. Although there was a tense moment in the middle where I had almost no health, but the enemies seemed to just kind of back off at that point to give me a chance to get the full health pickup and back into the fight. With my health bar restored, the rejuvenated Axel showed no mercy to Shadow, Spectre, and Hammerhead, each being granted a one-way ticket to a fiery demise. Although Hammerhead did a great job of avoiding everything I threw at him until he foolishly backed himself into a corner where I bumped into him slightly and ended him. Now onto the level exclusive to the PS2 port, Transylvania. Transylvania takes the form of a draconian castle in the small bit of the surrounding area. It's a map devoid of color, but does have interesting designs all throughout. It's massive, with the land outside the castle offering a bunch of space to roam and explore. However, I found myself doing the majority of my damage from the comfort of the castle. And also, there was an enemy at the very beginning of the battle that I genuinely have no idea what happened to them. There was no prompt that I destroyed them, they had just vanished into the Transylvania night without a sound. I, I don't even know who it was. Anyways, Twister and Hammerhead attempted to invade my castle, and met a fate befitting for any unwelcome siege party. However, when I got low on health, the only way I knew to get more was to play the minigame, which if completed would grant me full health. This minigame is an obstacle course. I guess, but it's so easy that I literally beat it without even steering whatsoever. All you have to do is press the gas at the right time. That's it. With my health restored, I was back into the fight, quickly removing Crimson Fury and Sweet Tooth from contention. It was just like that, I was off to Tokyo Streets. Tokyo Streets acts as the spiritual successor to Hong Kong from Twisted Metal 2, in that it's a completely urban environment with a grid-like layout. However, with the power of the PSP and PS2, there's much more in store for a player with its sheer size and surprising level of complexity on offer. There's more verticality and elevated platforms on this map than one might expect, but it's all the same story. Axel cares not what venue, what time, what reason. All will fall under the merciless dreads of Axel's wheels. Within just 10 seconds of loading in, I had destroyed Warthog. Within 20 seconds, I had taken out Twister. Within one minute, Outlaw knew the fires of Axel's power. 10 seconds from then, Shadow had no other option but to run into a corner until the sweet embrace of my Ricos ushered them into the underworld. Before I could take on my last enemy, I did need some help, so I took a slight detour through the wrecked bridge area where a small pickup was waiting. Now with enough health, I approached Twister, who was really just doing circles around the radio tower, I guess hoping I could somehow pull some Looney Tunes BS and get me from behind, but eventually I caught up to them and moved on to the penultimate stage, but not before some well-deserved actual celebrations. Every Twisted Metal is required by international law to have a rooftops battleground, so here is Head On's legally obligated version of that, Tokyo Rooftops. It's made up of several buildings all connected by bridges made up of toppled radio towers. And like any proper rooftops level, the hazard of falling off is ever present and not afraid to spread itself to the opponents. Spectre for some reason just drove right off the building. Unfortunately, falling off in this game only leads to a small chunk of damage taken instead of an instant kill. Also unfortunately, I got way too confident by this point after just bulldozing the rest of the game and was destroyed by Crimson Fury, the very last enemy. This meant I lost all my upgrades and had no way to regain them before my battle with Darktooth and Towertooth since there were no enemies in which to take them from. I reluctantly took out Crimson Fury and shuffled off down to the streets below to face off against the final boss. The last battle of head-on was upon us. Axel was at his lowest power. Against the most formidable enemies yet, Darktooth gave me some issues with his grabby mouth claws, but otherwise was blasted fairly quick. This left us with just Towertooth, an unreasonably big boss who is constantly using their shield and zapping me when I get within actual power range. Another tedious part of this battle is that he will constantly patrol a route that takes him to the health pickups, meaning the only way through this was to take laps around the map, picking up the health as I spawned in. 
and taking my shots at him when I could. When Tower Tooth gets to half health, he enters the next stage of his battle, which basically just means he will only take damage if he is hit in the head, which a bunch of weapons are just completely unable to do, leaving me with really just homing missiles and swarmers. It's a frustrating fight to be sure, but not one Axel can't handle. After countless orbits of the level, Tower Tooth finally took the L, and Axel received his prize. And one thing to note before I show Axel's ending is that the music for the boss battle is this ridiculous funky bongo number. The PSP version used a metal track that ripped, but the PS2 port used that awesome song for the Transylvania level instead, leaving this minigame bonus track for the final boss. It's crazy. Anyways, here's the ending for Axel. Congratulations, Axel. You've managed to defeat the competition and may claim your prize. Yes, Axel. Keep your promise and claim your prize. <laughs> Dr. Simu? So you do know each other then? Yes, he's the man who gave me these. I tore my arms free of this contraption, this prison. He built, built me new ones. He let me drive again. And what was your promise, Axel? I... I promised him my victory wish. Well then, I guess you'll want to turn your winnings over to the good doctor here. <laughs> yes, oh yes. <laughs> yes, of course he does. Give it to me. Give it to me. I can't do it. <laughs> Think be before you speak, boy. No. There's been too much destruction. It was a mistake for me to compete and it would be a mistake to let Twisted Metal continue. What? What? I want to remove violence from the world. I think <laughs> you've misspoken. I'm sorry, but I... Don't do it! Wish... Final warning! For pizza! Pizza? Pizza? Your wish for pizza is granted. No! <sighs> Let me out of this thing! Now perhaps I'll consider releasing you after you win next year's Twisted Metal. <laughs> you want a slice? So that's Twisted Metal Head On, 15 years later. It still holds up as one of the most fun and engaging games in the franchise, even though it lacks some of the lasting gameplay hooks that some of the other more popular Twisted Metal titles have. Although it lacks some of the lasting gameplay hooks that some of the other more popular Twisted Metal titles have, it's an absolute blast and I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like it. Have a great day.